The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated. Well, as I said, we're starting a a sermon series for these next three weeks called The Heart of the Maker. And this is a series that's all about making things. It's about why we build and create and craft. Not only why we do it, but why God calls us to make things. And so for these next three weeks, each week we'll begin with a video from someone in the congregation who is a maker who has participated in physically building things in this church. And we are doing that right now, you can probably maybe guess, because in a few weeks, hopefully, we are going to say goodbye to some of the things in this sanctuary and that we have made. And we are going to begin the whole process of welcoming new things to be made. And so this series is a way of honoring those things and also preparing our hearts and minds for that change. So without further ado, the first video this week, of course, comes to us from Mr. Carl Buch. When I was first uh, a member here, we had two little girls and uh, then we had three and then four and then five little girls. Um, When I was in the pew uh, on a Sunday morning, we would have to juggle between the hymnal and the bulletin. With a baby in your arm, the bulletin, the hymnal, it was just hard to be able to follow along. A lot of times it took me about two or three verses to be able to join in with the hymn. So Pastor Hugh asked me if I could build the sound booth and projection screen, and I said, yeah, you betcha. That was probably 25 years ago at least. The cool thing was, as soon as I brought it in the door, uh, it wasn't mine anymore. It was a gift to the church, and it was a gift to the congregation. Uh, Let God bless it and uh, use it as he may. Uh, since then, you know, there's, there's been a lot of young families that can see the projection up on the screen and follow along with the service, and that is a blessing. And it was just so cool to see uh, some of the younger members like Gwen uh, working in there, building her faith during a service. Um, that's what it's all about. is to uh, build up treasures in heaven rather than here on earth. These things are all just tools. What's the treasure is the faith that each one of us can develop in this congregation, in this building. Uh, Whether it's the altar or the the pulpit, they're all tools, they're they're all things. Uh, What I wanna be able to do is build up treasures in heaven. Thank you, yeah. He showed up in overalls just to mess with me. (laughs) Oh, I love it. Carl's made quite a bit of the things in this sanctuary and so has kind of a vested interest in sharing his thoughts on on the changes that will come. uh, And we appreciate that. But when I think of makers in my life, I cannot help but think of my grandpa, Wendell Wassell. He built the house, Heather, he built the house that is still on our, in our family on Oaklawn Street in East Moline, Illinois, about four hours north. Not only did he build that house by hand, but he dug the basement. If you'll go to the next picture, he dug that basement by hand with a shovel and wheelbarrow. And not only did he shovel out that basement himself, But every single one of those concrete blocks you see there 
he poured the molding for. If you go to the next picture, you'll see back in the background behind that car is the concrete mixer. And here's how it went for my grandpa every single day. He worked third shift at John Deere Foundry, pouring liquid iron into molds. But before he would go to work that evening, he would mix concrete in that mixer, pour it into the molds, and then head to work. When he got off in the morning, he would come home, uncase the concrete blocks from the mold, work them into the foundation, pour new molds, and then go to bed. And then the next day, he'd start over and do the whole thing, block by block by block. He was a maker. And he made a home for his family that would carry his six children through to adulthood. Thanks, Heather. And for me, that is what God has been asking makers to do since the beginning, to build and make things that will carry people through. Getting God's children, God's people through a specific time and place, from point A to point B. And that is what that Noah's Ark reading, our first one that seems like it has nothing to do with what we're talking about, that is what it is all about to me. Make me an ark, God says to Noah. And then he lays out specific details and dimensions and the material requirements. And none of this was too much for Noah. He built and he built and he built in order that his family, a very small contingent of God's people, would be carried through the flood. Now that work that my grandpa did, the, that was a lot. And the, I'm not comparing him to Noah, but what Noah did was even greater. But not all makers build huge arcs. The Hebrew word for the ark that Noah made is tava, tava, meaning box. And it is used only one other time in the Old Testament. Any guesses? And I'll give you a little hint. It's not the Ark of the Covenant, right, that the Ten Commandments were carried in. It's not that. It is not that. That's a different word even though they say Ark. Let me read to you from Exodus 2-3. See if you recognize it. When she could no longer hide him, she got a papyrus basket, a tava, for him, and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reed on the bank of the river. Who is that? Moses. That's Moses' mother, Yehebed, making a tiny ark for her baby. The same ark that God instructed Noah to build so that she could place him in the river and he might live. Makers have been building arks for God's people of all shapes and sizes since God was asking people to build arks. Arks are these precious things that God uses to carry us through. It is divine work, and yet, as Carl said in the video, they are impermanent things, right? They are simply tools for the moment. These things we create with our hands, precious as they are to us, difficult as they are to make, they are only meant to last a little while. Noah built and built and built a floating zoo that would only sail once. 370 odd days, and that was it, and it was left to rot on a mountain. And I think of Yohebed's fingers getting sticky and sore from pushing pitch in between the reeds of this little ark that she was building for Moses. All that work to make it watertight so that it could float for less than an hour. We make all these things that carry us through a defined time and place. And those things are precious to us. But they are pointing us to the ultimate ark, 
carrying us through to our treasure in heaven. They point us to Jesus, the one who carries us through sin and death on the ark of his cross. These things we make, have made, and we will leave behind in the coming weeks as we move forward, have carried us from point A to B, but they do not last forever. But the ultimate truth they point to is eternal. And as much as this building campaign that we're going to be jumping off into is about things, there's also something else that happens, something that lasts beyond the lives of the arcs that we build. I want to read to you again from Exodus chapter 2, taking off just where we were starting with Yehebed. She put the child in it, in the ark, and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Who knows the name of Moses' sister? Miriam, yay! Who got, whoever said that gets an award. Moses' big sister Miriam was watching. She was watching. She watched her mother build this ark. And it was Miriam who would save Moses a second time when Pharaoh's daughter picks up this baby and she says, oh, I know someone who can nurse him. So you haven't even got to nurse Moses. And it was Miriam who will sing the song of God's people on the other side of the Reed Sea when they finally get to freedom. And it all started with this little girl watching, watching her mother make a tiny ark. There are little people watching us even now watching what we put our time and energy and resources into building, even as we construct the little and the big arcs, the baskets and the churches and the homes that will carry our children through their lives. They're watching us. We are constructing before them the faith they will carry in their hearts. I agree with Carl. We are absolutely storing up our treasure in heaven, that which is to come. Every nickel, dollar, dime, two by four, can of paint, slab of stone that we invest in, that is a treasure in heaven that we are building up, right? And at the same time, we are building up the treasure of faith in the children watching us from the water's edge. And not just children but the neighbors and the friends and the co-workers in our lives who have yet to know the love and mercy following Jesus offers, they are watching how we invest of ourselves too. So when my dad was retelling me the story of my grandpa and his concrete block making this week, um, I said, oh, you know, it is just so incredible to me. I cannot conceive of even building a home myself, let alone making concrete blocks. How did he know how to do all that? Where did he learn it from? And my dad said, honestly, I don't know. I never asked. So I was like, all right, well, thanks for the help on the sermon. <laughs> but later that day, I came home from work, and like I always do, I go into my home office, and I drop off all my stuff on my desk, and um, I saw something. This brick, not brick, it's stone, was there on my desk. It's been sitting there since last September when I went to Sweden. I uh, stole it from Sweden. Sure hope that's okay. But I really kind of felt like it was mine. It was a stone, not molded, but clearly chiseled, manipulated, whatever had to be done. But it was from the foundation of my ancestral home. My grandpa's grandpa, Ben Wassell, had constructed the foundation of his home using these stones. And so I took it. That is where 
my grandpa learned to make his family arc from watching his father and his grandfather, from watching the heart of other makers at work, making things that would see their families through a time and a place. And if you'll notice, Faith, if you look to the ceiling in our sanctuary, there's something very intentional about the way this was originally built. What does that remind you of? A boat. An ark. That is why we build. We build this sanctuary for a certain time and place because it is absolutely an ark meant to take a people from point A to B. And in its current form, this sanctuary has been an ark for several generations of people. And in the act of building it again, making it new, filling it with new things, allowing new hands to make things, we are showing our children who we trust and where our faith lies. I will never get to live in my grandfather's house on Oaklawn Avenue again. I will never likely be back to the ancestral home of my forebearers, but I can see what they spent their time and energy on. And hopefully my children, hopefully your children, will see that in you, in the time and the energy that you put forward in the world, where you're doing it at, those little eyes watching you from the river's edge. I remember a couple of years ago, my daughter was about 10, and uh, she put my coat on, and she goes, oh, Mom, I look like you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's sinking in, people. What I do? Take your place, brothers and sisters. You Miriams, you Noahs, you Carls, you Windles, you Bens. Pick up your hammer, your needle, your thread, your paintbrush, your paying hands, your singing voice, your teaching skills, your time, your talent, and your treasures. Because when you do it in your families and in your life together here, you are building not only the arcs that will carry this church through, but you are showing your maker's heart to those who are watching, building up their faith, a faith they will carry with them. Thanks be to God for this precious work. Amen.